All right, this is Concept 2 Notes, and we are going to talk more about disease and the connection between bacteria and viruses and how they act as pathogens to cause disease. So a brief overview, just a little reminder of some things, especially if um, you haven't covered homeostasis in detail. Homeostasis is the stability of the internal environment and the mechanisms that maintain that stability. It's maintaining these constant and stable internal conditions within an organism. And it's constantly threatened. There are constantly things coming at an organism that can affect its ability to maintain stability. And if it doesn't respond to these threats, or to say it a little more nicely, to stimuli in the environment that can affect it, this could result in disease or death. Now, Things that disrupt homeostasis. It's not just viruses and bacteria. Fungi, other parasites, these all can infect organisms and disrupt homeostasis on an internal level. And thus that will impact organisms' ability to function in life. And so that's just a brief overview of how this connects to homeostasis. The failure of homeostasis to be regulated and to maintain that stability leads to disease and potentially death. So something that's critical for us to touch on is the germ theory for disease. And the germ theory is the concept that disease is caused by the presence of pathogenic microorganisms. And a lot of scientists contributed to this idea. It would not have been possible without the scientists that came up with a microscope and these other significant contributions to microbiology. But the two that kind of get the most credit for the germ theory are Pasteur and Koch. And so I want to talk about those for a minute. If you do have time, there is an excellent YouTube video. The link is in the show notes where if you just watch the first three or four minutes, it'll talk more about the actual experimentation done by Pasteur. But just to hit the highlights, he was a chemist and essentially, he discovered that fermentation, which is used to make a lot of different foods and, and particularly alcoholic beverages like wine, but also decay, were caused by living microorganisms. And this led to the development of the pasteurization process, which he is very notably famous for. And then you have Robert Koch. A lot of people pronounce his last name um, different ways. He was German. But he was essentially a microbiologist, and he built on Pasteur's finding. And he studied a lot of different bacteria, and he came up with a universal method for determining whether a specific bacterium was causing a specific disease. So he was the first one to really have that cause and effect, which was huge in our understanding of disease and what caused it. Also, that video I mentioned that talks about Pasteur's experiments has a couple other really interesting things if you watch the whole thing, but they're not necessarily relevant to this lecture, but it's good stuff, so you should check it out. Okay, so let's talk about causes of disease. Of course, the presence of disease-causing bacteria, viruses, or fungi play a role. Just a reminder, I did not say disease-causing bacteria, viruses, or fungi organisms. Because remember, viruses are not organisms. They are not living things. They are intracellular parasites. They can only reproduce and function by using another cell, which is a part of a living organism. So they are not living things in and of themselves. But there's also more that can cause disease. I know this is a unit specifically about pathogens or microorganisms and biological entities that cause disease, but I would be remiss not to address other disease-causing factors because there's so much more that goes into it. So one of those things can be hereditary factors. You may inherit genes from your parents that give you a genetic disorder, such as something like cystic fibrosis. But you can also inherit genes that give you a genetic predisposition to certain diseases, such as the BRCA1, the BRCA1 gene, can make you more likely to potentially get breast cancer. Or there are connections and research done on genes that make you more susceptible to addictive behaviors or depression. So there are 
inheritance factors that go into what causes disease. There's also, of course, environmental factors, things that you're exposed to in your everyday life, whether that's toxic substances, poor nutrition, unhealthy habits or addictions in your life, exposure to mutagens or chemicals that cause mutations, which can then cause, obviously, issues there. There are so many things. And what's interesting to note is the exposure to these environmental factors don't necessarily cause an immediate disease or health issue, but they can cause long-term health issues down the road. Last thing, of course, is gene mutation, which can be caused by many things like carcinogens, mutagens, that kind of thing. This results in uncontrolled cell division, which is the same thing as cancer. So cancer is uncontrolled cell division. Your uh, body cells are doing that repeatedly out of control, results in the growth of tumors, which can be benign or malignant, which cancer was covered in detail in our cells unit. But I had to just mention gene mutations specifically, which can obviously, of course, Gene mutations can connect to hereditary factors and environmental factors. So all of these things are interconnected. And so I had to just mention those. And also to mention that diseases are so highly researched. And yes, there's a wealth of knowledge and research out there, but there's still so much more being done to figure out exactly what causes certain things and what factors play roles in certain diseases. Um, so this is, again, we're just doing a broad overview here of this topic, and we are definitely not covering it in its entirety or doing it justice. But I do want to highlight bacteria and viruses specifically because in concept one, we talked about their structure and reproduction. So in this unit, I want to talk about how are these causing disease? Why are these two entities such threats to us? Well, one is that they're able to live in a vast variety of environments. So they can live in so many different places, meaning they're all over. We also can't see them. So it's something that, it, it's not really something I can visually see and then avoid it, such as an environmental factor like tobacco or cigarette smoke. That is something I can see and avoid and, and try not to put into my life. But something like a bacteria and virus, I can't, I can't see it and I can't necessarily avoid it. But the main thing that's especially threatening is their ability to reproduce so rapidly. Because they reproduce so rapidly, they can evolve adaptations in populations very quickly. And this is something we'll talk about in concept three when we talk about how we treat bacterial and viral diseases and how we're constantly having to evolve those treatments because of their evolution. So the last two things I want to do is brief, brief, brief overview of how bacteria specifically cause disease and then how viruses cause disease. And this is a picture of E. coli, which E. coli do a lot of great things for us, but they also cause um, some illnesses such as food poisoning. So a bacterial disease, this is how it's caused. They will invade an organism, whether that's your skin, your mouth, whatever it may be. They will then challenge the immune system or kind of compromise your immune system, overcome it, if you will. And then they're going to use your healthy cells for food. And that's going to cause them to break down those healthy cells and those tissues that those cells make up. And then they can release toxins like proteins that can travel through different two different tissues throughout your body once they make it into your bloodstream. And that's how they can really affect your whole body and can make you very, very, very sick. So again... Very small overview, and I just want to mention it briefly. Something else that's super fascinating, too, is to think, how can something so tiny take over something so massive in comparison, like us? And there's a fascinating TED Talk um, that the link's in the show notes if you want to watch it, about how bacteria actually facilitate group behaviors. They communicate with each other, and they work together to basically overtake um massive organisms like us. It's really, really interesting. Okay, last thing I want to mention, um, how do viruses cause disease? And there's another video. I know so many videos, but there's so many great ones. But it's in the show notes, and it's about how the flu virus specifically invades our body. So you should check it out. But viruses will target specific tissues. 
bacteria are way less tissue specific. Viruses are very specific. So like the influenza virus, it specifically targets tissues in your respiratory chat, tract or hepatitis targets the liver, that kind of thing. So viruses will invade these specific target cells. They will hijack their protein expression mechanisms so that they, this your viral DNA or RNA is being replicated and then it's going to be transcribed and translated. And so then it's going to be processed and it's going to make it possible for them to then copy themselves and spread themselves throughout an organism. And that is our very brief 10-minute overview of disease.